Hello and welcome to another update stream for the Operation Candyland DCS open beta multiplayer mission that is currently running uh, in its seventh run and it is day five. Uh, just give you a quick update on where the mission is at. So we'll go to the Discord and jump to daily objectives and go to objectives for today. So <clears throat> we could see that um, the primary objective here is in the north, a command unit uh, is on its way to uh, MACOP to uh, tell these ground units to start an attack on the airbase so blue can capture it. In the south, um, there is a commander on its way to Sochi to take control of all these uh, blue ground units and move them to uh, TWAPS, which is I think, no, sorry, over here, or over here, it's over here, um, uh, to advance uh, the ground mission. So uh, basically what we're, what we're seeing here is we could do a fighter sweep or ground attack uh, or cast at MACOP in the south doing uh, a fighter sweep to protect the convoy from any ground attackers uh, as well as cast and cap for the convoy as it moves across. Uh, so that was quite a bit um, uh, earlier this morning. So now let's take a look at where the campaign has gotten to since. So I am going to jump into multiplayer Candyland. I favorited it by clicking that little yellow arrow or a uh, star. Join. And here we go. So um, if you wanted to uh, get an idea of what's going on before jumping in. Instead of clicking anything in the get-go, click Briefing, Fly, F10. And this will give you uh, a God's eye view of what's going on in the world. And so as we can see, that blue group that was at Sochi um, basically convoyed all the way to TWAPS. These are rearming, refitting, etc and uh, scout units, etc., have pushed up, we could see, uh, to outside of Glenzik. And so now it's gonna kind of rinse and repeat where all these units are gonna gather outside Glenzik and then wait for a commander and then push forward and try to capture it uh, by killing everything that's there. So there's really not a necessity for us to provide escort to TWAPS anymore. That, that mission is kind of, uh, uh, complete and blues continue to push forward. Uh, in the north, we could see that uh, a commander unit, in fact, did get here, but doesn't have any units to actually deploy to move forward to capture makeup. So it's kind of a standoff up here. Um, there's not really any attack units uh, at the ready, and there are uh, no red defenders, and red doesn't have anything to attack with. So it's kind of um, anybody's for the taking in the north if somebody could get uh, some transport planes get some attack units dropped off and uh, start to push forward so uh, in terms of what we can do to be useful based on where the mission is is at right now one thing we could do is try to push in the south theater and take out some of this stuff at Glenzik. the only problem with that is if i turn on view engagement areas we could see that all these red rings represent uh, enemy SAM sites. And so we won't even be able to get to two apps before we start to get engaged by SA-10s, uh, etc. So I don't think it's going to be very easy to push into there. There's also an enemy ship kind of hiding off the coast here, uh, which will engage with uh, its air-to-air -air, uh, defenses if we, if we stray too close to it. In the north, um, MACOP doesn't really need any help. Uh, we could try to go after some of these uh, units that are here. So there's a supply convoy and uh, a scout group. But, you know, spending our time going after that I don't think is going to make uh, that big of a difference. Now, something we could do that would be useful is there are three command bunkers at Krasnodar. So the command bunkers allow for uh, airplanes to uh, take off from here, 
attack helicopter to take off from here, ground units to start to forward deploy, etc. So if we were able to pop these, it would um, disable the enemy from, from having command and control here, and therefore it would prevent it from sending out units uh, forward, etc. So it could be very worthwhile uh, to take those out. Again, it's not like there's a whole bunch of units here that are ready to go, but it is their front, their most frontline air base um, that they're, that's currently op, uh, operating because it, it has command units here. So it might be worthwhile to just kill those. We're kind of outside of the SAM rings, uh, and, and I think that might be uh, uh, a good strike to do. Uh, if we brought enough, we could probably even hit Kranzadar Center at the same time because it's currently not defended uh, by any um, SAM sites. Now there are fighters we could see, and, and fighters will be kind of roaming the area, so we might have to be air-to-air -air defensive, and also if we're flying here and we're going to be heads down looking at our T-Pod um, screen, you know, one of these might sneak up on us and jump us. So it won't be an easy mission to do by ourselves necessarily, just because of these enemy air threats, um, but I think that that seems to be the the most useful thing I can I can think up right now. So as we saw, uh, the possible air bases to take off from are Gudata or Nalchek. So let's do. I think Gudata is actually going to be closer, so we'll take off in the south and fly up north. So we'll do escape, select roll, Gudata, and I fly the F-16 and briefing. And once we're here, um, you could flip through these screens to get more information about the mission, if you like. A lot of that is also uh, in the Discord. All right, so getting in our plane here, I'm going to uh, open up our kneeboard with right shift and K and I wonder if my track IR as usual is not working of course not all right so uno momento let's quit the desktop yes track IR says it's running very good and DCS open beta uh, so recently I've been working uh, on updating uh, the kneeboards that I have for the F-16. Uh, they're going to show kind of different uh, things that can be, th different procedures that can be followed from 99.9% uh, prototypical uh, down to a prototypical uh, scramble start, which would be kind of the fastest real life way to start your plane. Uh, down to, well, what do you need just to get DCS up and, or, or just what do you need from a DCS perspective just to get up in the air? Uh, and so hopefully that will uh, be helpful to you all for people who want to learn how to kind of fly an F-16 real lifestyle um, versus, um, you know, DCS. And, and I'm going to advance my learning on that as time goes. Uh, obviously my time is split a little bit between um, actually creating the mission and maintaining uh, all the things that someone has to do when you have a server running. But uh, it'll also, I think, be illuminating to kind of see like, oh, all right, well, what are the correct procedures and, and, and things like that. So more to come on that, but you'll have to bear with me if uh, I'm all over the place with my checklists uh, as they're a little bit more advanced than they used to be at this point. All right, so again, we're gonna go to Gaudata. And then initial load sometimes just takes a second while it's preloading all the things on the map. There we go. And briefing and fly. And I'm gonna turn on my air conditioning just so my uh, computer doesn't overheat. Oh, good, I have an air right to start off with. I don't know what that is. Let me check the server. Server seems to be fine. So kind of a strange error. 
I don't know. I could spend some time looking at it, but I won't waste uh, your stream time uh, digging through that. But if anyone's interested in how you would kind of just look through the uh, logs to try to figure out what, what went wrong, just uh, for your own kind of information, uh, more than happy to walk through that sometime. Anyway, this is going to be the stream of uh, how to start uh, DCS but never actually fly. And I've ran out of stuff to randomly talk about, so now we're just going to sit in painful silence. And DCS is just actually loading, so I didn't I didn't mean that. Okay, here we go. All right, so <clears throat> multiplayer. And rather than searching, we'll just see that my favorite is uh, up at the top of the screen. And if it's not, you can click the star to sort the list. But there we go. Load it in. Join. And we'll try this again. Let it, oh my goodness, we can't even keep the game going anymore. Ah, I don't know what the problem is. So let me actually check the airlog. Unhandled exception, no input port. In scheme, ex suppress explosion, abnormal termination. I don't know what that means. Well, all we can do is try, try again, I guess. So I launched it earlier. There was an update today, thankfully, that um, fixed uh, a server problem we've been having where uh, when a unit is driving around, um, if it was killed, if it was the lead unit of the group and it was killed, it would cause DCS to crash. And so, there was a patch that came out today uh, from Eagle Dynamics, and in the release notes, uh, no surprise, it said that that had been fixed. And every time that I was getting an error, I was posting it um, online, so or, or uh, posting it as part of that blue screen uh, uh, where it's, it's asking you to kind of elaborate on what the issue was. So uh, hats off to ED for pushing that fix out so fast. I really thought that was going to just be a thing that was going to be broken for a long time and just be the bane of the server. But, um, you know, I, I was super present, pleasantly surprised uh, by that. So a big shout out to those guys. All right. Let's see if we have any better luck now. And I'm going to pick the second slot to see if that makes life any better. And, you know, my computer is kind of hot right now. Maybe it's my problem. I do have an overclock on my box running, and sometimes if it gets to just the right temperature, it starts acting funky. So, I won't blame DCS necessarily. It's probably me. And user error on not knowing how to start my air conditioning. All right. All right, I can move my head. All right, I think we've gotten somewhere. So we'll center our view here. Right shift and K to bring up kneeboard. Bracket key, right bracket key to uh, get up our cold start. Again, it's a little bit clunky, so just bear with me. Uh, the, the kneeboards are being updated and kind of a work in progress. So. Pardon the keyboard says chucks. I think it uh, uh, this it's spelling corrected to that for some reason. All right, so we will do norm, steady, bright and bright, and turn off our anti-collision. JFS to start position two. Verify that our throttle is to idle. Our our 
real life one that we're playing with. Wait for 20% RPM. Right shift and home. Wait to get to 60% uh, RPM. And for the engine light to go out. Confirm that all of our gauges work. Now we're going to turn on our avionics. And I'm going to do a normal, uh, sure, we'll do a normal align. MDS2 on. Confirm our lat and long coordinates. So we could press F10 and confirm our airplane is actually here. Um, as a little bit of a cheat, I can tell you that it always is. So enter, enter, and enter. And you have to do that within the first two minutes, so just do that as soon as you can. Turn on our HUD. Turn on our hardpoint, our fire control radar, and set our radar altitude to standby. Uh, set our UHF radio. So I'm going to tune to the frequency that the AI uh, always talks on. So that's 333. And I'm going to set my UHF radio so I could hear uh, both whatever I, I type in here as well as the backup. And let's make sure that's on manual. Yep. Okay. All right. Go back to list six for our uh, INS page. Uh, cycle flight controls. Good. 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 Speed brake closed. Confirmed. Uncage and set SAI. Good. Confirm fuel quantity to norm. Good. Check trim is centered. Good. Confirm INS flashing and switch to nav. Not good. And so we'll just wait for uh, the INS to catch back up. So let's just flip to the F10 screen here for a moment and kind of see what's going on uh, in the world. So another thing here that you can do uh, to kind of get some situational awareness and understand what's going on, on in the map is up here, there's this mark label on off. And if I click that, we're going to see that uh, these little informational tabs pop up. And you can basically come back and just check this you know, numerous times. These are going to be constantly updated and new stuff going on. Now, something interesting here is the Southern Theater Ground Forces objective has gone from up here at Glenzik all the way back to Kutaisi. The reason that's happened is a cruise missile strike killed the commander uh, at Kutaisi. And so now it's Blue's priority to get a commander uh, established back at Kutaisi. So this is going to really screw up uh, Blue's advance because they're basically going to uh, uh, pull back now uh, because the chain of command has been broken. So I don't know if they're currently doing that or not. Yep. So we could see some of these units are already uh, pulling back now uh, to uh, to the safe uh, front that they know that they own. So good on Red for uh, getting a cruise missile strike back at Kutaisi and kind of screwing up the uh, the chain of command there. We could see that an A uh, an A10 uh, was lost, and we could see that this is the Northern Theater objective. And so if we were doing a uh, a cat mission 
right now we might fly over there and try and find if we can see an enemy fighter or something like this and now that I'm in a in a blue slot it's actually fog of war so I can't see all the stuff that used to be uh, on the map I can only see things that other uh, blue units have currently seen or are detecting all right so get back here it's the slow crawl uh, of the INS So we see that a uh, friendly blue fright flight has just taken off. So that's Ranch and Murdoch in their uh, uh, F-14. And just give me one moment here. Uh, we'll stick with the camera on them. All right, sorry about that. Um, so, let's see if our INS is aligned yet. Ooh, we're getting close. We are getting close. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, prep the uh, ground crew for what our rearm will be. Don't do this while you're aligning, though, because uh, rocking the plane will actually cause the INS to misalign. Uh, of the weapons being added to uh, the plane. But we will just prep this. Can we still click buttons? And Yeah, I think we can. All right, so ba ba ba. So just a little bit of self-defense here. And we'll take our center line tank, take our lightning pod, and We'll want some uh, smart bombs for this, so we'll take GBU-12 on the inner, and uh, we'll do two times GBU-12 on the outer. And I like to fly as 97, and I'm going to go with the Dark Viper theme. And we see our INS is flashing to ready now, so nav, good to go there, Request refueling. get that going. Request rearming. And I'm going to dob a return just to get us back to the DED screen. And we're also going to tune into the airport radio, so uh, if I click on Gaudata, where we're at right now, see it's one three zero so com two one three zero 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 enter right control backslash 
ATC, Gaudata, request startup. I think we're ready to taxi. And let's check our steer point. So I'm going to click on us. And if this yellow line doesn't come up, click on the little steer point tool up here. And we know we want to go try and attack these bunkers at waypoint 20 and 19. So we'll go to 20 first. So return, so I have my steer points and click through to 20. Very good. And <clears throat> I naturally didn't listen to which error, uh, which runway is active. So right control backslash. Abort. And right control backslash and request takeoff. There we go. 3-3. Three, three. Alright, so we set our steering point. Let's see if there's an AWACS on station. There is not, so nothing to talk to. Ground crew, remove wheel chucks. Chocks. <laughs> Chief, remove the wheel chucks. Chucks is more fun. Wheel chucks are now removed. Okay, exterior lighting, radar altitude to on. All right, so now we'll do uh, Gardada traffic, candy. Taxiing to runway 33. And we would say this if we were, uh, you know, on voice with everybody else just to let everybody know what's going on. So let's figure out which one runway we should take off from. And whoo boy, 33, right there. Nice. So now we're going to check our brakes. Move forward, brake. Move forward, brake. Both of our brake channels work. Nose wheel steering to on, and let's roll forward. See, Murdoch got revenge on that MiG-31 that killed him uh, a little while ago, so good job on that, guys. So we're about to hold short, so I'm going to switch our IFF to uh, norm, confirm our speed brake is closed, check that our configuration is correct, and since we have bombs on the wings, we're going to go to category 3. Um, we're going to make sure our ejection seat is armed, probe heat is on, ATC request takeoff. Adjust our altimeter to 3059. Very good. And basically, let's go a little bit further here to get the altimeter to zero. Okay. Uh, and then uh, they said to take off for two, uh, heading 300. So I'm going to set our HSI to that. Okay. 
and we're good to go. All right, so Gaudata traffic, Candy lining up runway 33. Okay, go down to traffic, Candy taking off runway 33, proceeding heading 300, spool up to 90%. Confirm our control surfaces work. And here we go. Okay, let's do attitude hold and heading select. At 400, we're going to come off the burner. So we see that there's a radar contact uh, out ahead of us, quite a few actually, so I'm going to do an IFF sweep to see if those are friendly or not. So we'll go uh, DMS down to make this our SOI, sensor of interest. Hit uh, left on the TMS switch and we see we're scanning. And green, green, and green. So no enemies out ahead, good stuff. We're established on our outbound heading. Uh, ideally, you want to get to takeoff climb of either 0.82 or uh, 400 casts, which is right about where we're at. So now we're going to say uh, go down to traffic, candy, exit, heading 300. And now we're out of uh, ATC's control. We're going to turn to our steer point. So from heading select, we'll switch to steer point, and that's going to put us towards steer point 20. We're going to turn on our air to air mode. By default, uh, I could hear that hissing, so I know that I have a 9x selected. I'm going to switch the 9x to cool. All right, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to hold my nose wheel steering switch down, and it's going to switch us to our AMRAM. I switch off our exterior lighting. No point in broadcasting where we are to the world. and just continue our climb here. So I'm going to level off here at 20,000 feet, get back to Mach 0.82, which is our ideal climb uh, speed. Uh, and then once we pick that back up, we'll, we'll pull back up some more. Just waiting for about 20,000. All right, so uh, the reason you want to get to 20,000 is we have no idea if there's bad guys anywhere under us. And it all it takes is one guy with a man, a man pad or um, uh, any type of infrared to just take us out quickly. And we won't know what's happening because our radar uh, or our RWR would never pick that up. So by switching to, or, or by getting to 20,000 uh, and above, uh, you're actually in a very safe altitude uh, that if one of those come, you'll see a big puff of white smoke coming to you. You'll have time to react, drop a uh, flare, and more than likely it's not gonna get you. All right, so let's just see if uh, uh, we have an AWACS up. We do. So now we need to know what frequency to tune into this AWACS, because if we try talking to them now, we're not going to hear a response. So go to Other, Mission Information, Frequencies, AWACS, 296 on UHF, COM1, 2 nine six zero zero enter 
right alt and backslash AWAX request bogey dope. I'm gonna switch back to out attitude hold because we're above Mach 0.82 and put us back into a climb. Alright, so about 110 miles away over there is the closest enemy. Alright, so that's good for our checklist from now. Alright, so let's get configured uh, to fight. So, master arm on. RWR on. Countermeasures on. I like to leave it in program 1 for the F-16. I like to fire my chaff and flare manually, so switching to man. <clears throat> and helmet symbology all the way up. That looks good. Speed looks okay. Alright, I think we're alright here. So let's extend out our search radar. Let's switch to our HSD. Extend that out. And so we can see we've got a bunch of friendlies, and we're about to be the forward most friendly, uh, as far as I could tell, on the HSD. So we're the tip of the spear. <clears throat> see that there's a radar contact out ahead of us. Flying at 4,000 feet. Let's do an IFF sweep. And it seems like there's a friendly here, but that doesn't seem aligned with the radar ping. So do a second sweep. And still something friendly is here, but not here. So this could be, for example, uh, the F-117A stealth bomber. We're not able to actually see him on radar, but his IFF is responding to let us know that he's there. Sometimes, though, the IFF can be offset from the actual radar ping. It's possible that that is actually a friendly. So we'll want to get a little bit closer before we do anything uh, with that. But to interrogate this a little bit further, I'm going to put the radar cursor over it, press TMS up, and we didn't have a, we didn't have it quite locked up. All right, so it's moving at a speed of 220 at an altitude of 4,000. Maybe a helicopter. I think that's a little fast for a helicopter. Um, could be a low flying fighter trying to be sneaky. So we'll keep an eye on it. Now by doing um, TMS up once. This isn't a hard lock uh, on this enemy. It's a soft lock. So basically he doesn't know we're looking at him right now any more intently than anything else that we're looking at out in front of us. So we're just going to keep an eye on this guy and if there's an opportunity to swoop down and grab him uh, we might just do that. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to switch to uh, air to ground for a moment and get us all set up. So right shift and K to open up our kneeboard, bracket to look through them, and we're going to do a CCRP to a T-pod on. So a master arm on, sensor power on, laser on, air to ground mode selected. Skip that one because engine isn't off anymore. MFD menu, TGP. There's the camera for the TGP. Click the top one to air to ground. Good. Over here, MFD on our SMS page. Switch to CCRP. And that will get the camera to kind of spin around and look at our current waypoint out there. And uh, uh, that's really all we need to do for now. So it's too far out in the distance for us to see anything. But once we start to get a little bit closer to the objective that we're currently... 10 minutes away from, uh, we will start to see the ground and the airbase, and we'll start looking around and see if we can find those uh, two, two or three command bunkers uh, that were uh, around the airbase, as that will be our objective. Okay, so we're all, the, all good there. I'm going to go back to air to air, and you'll see that we lost contact with whatever that thing was. It's still there. But if we scroll our sensor cursor closer to us, we now see 4419. Basically, that means this far out ahead of our plane, which is here, we can only see enemies between 44,000 feet and 19,000 feet. 
However, we know that that enemy was only flying at 2,000 feet above the ground. So what I'm going to do is dip my radar down, and you're going to see this, uh, this go down to go search lower. So now we're going to search, and what do you know? And now at this, this distance, we're searching between 30,000 feet and negative 4 feet, or basically the ground. So I'm going to light them back up. Now, I'm not getting an RWR um, indicator from whoever this is, so it's probably not likely it's a fighter, um, but that doesn't mean it's not a, it, it may not be a threat to us. So, we should be able to kind of make out where this thing is. Just trying to get it so our helmet mount is uh, knowing we're looking out of the cockpit. A little bit finicky here. Come on. All right. So it's down there somewhere. We could just make it out. So now we ask ourselves this question. We're about to go into enemy territory. We have a limited number of of air-to-air -air, um, uh, weapons. So should we go down and hunt this random guy, or do we keep, keep pushing forward, especially since he's not a threat to us? And I'm going to go with, we let this guy go. AWACS has picked him up, so he should be making this call to uh, uh, other units. I could tell now it's a huge bomber, so it's probably a TU-142, so he really presents no threat to us. And I will assume that our fighters back here will probably intercept this guy. So I'm just going to keep pushing. I'm going to also level out. So altitude hold. And we can also see that the P on the RWR is our Patriot system coming up, which is probably located right there and it's going to give that bomber uh, a bad day. So, feel okay with our decision. Alright, let's switch back to air to ground. Uh, actually, let's extend our radar back out. So that wedding cake, that is our steer point. So what we want to make sure of is that we're pretty clear to get there at least, uh, and we're not going to engage anything. So we see another contact, 23,000 feet, so let's do an IFF sweep. Do a second one. And that's uh, AWACS identifying that bomber we just flew past. Okay, so this thing's at 20, it was at 23,000 feet a second ago, now at 27,000 feet. You'll see that our radar is tuned between 30,000 feet and negative 20,000 feet. Uh, for that distance. So it makes no sense to be looking that deep into the ground. So I'm going to turn our radar back up a little bit. And just note that changes as you kind of move it up and down. So this guy's still coming at us. 29,000 feet. RWR. Spike. So he's locking us up. Switch to autopilot off. We're going to put this circle in this circle and make sure that this triangle is below the topmost part uh, of that graph, which means we're in parameters. Box 3. Send them defensive. I'm keeping my nose on them because my missile needs my radar until it gets much closer to flip its own radar on and chase them. There, it just locked onto him and freaked him out. He's making a turn. I'm not going to turn toward his nose. I'm going to turn. I'm going to keep behind him. I want to fly toward him and come up to his rear, not put my nose in front of him, and then we're we're facing at each other again. He's kind of flying off to the side here. It hit him. Splash. Altitude hold. Steering select. Now, you see the plane kind of rolling. That's not me rolling it. Uh, this wing 
is now a hell of a lot heavier than that wing that's missing a 120. And so you want to make sure that you have your trim set up to uh, even that out. Now by switching to uh, altitude hold and steering select, I put it into autopilot so it's going to trim it for us. But the moment I take uh, <coughs> autopilot back off, we roll. So now I'm going to turn my trim, left wing down. Let's kind of dial this in a little bit. And let's see if that's okay. That's pretty good. Close enough. So I'll switch that back on. Alright, so we're... <coughs> switch our radar altitude's on. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to air to ground. And what do you know? We see the airbase now. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and try to figure out where these control uh, these uh, command bunkers are at. So I'm going to help myself out by switching to white hot mode first. We can see an airplane on the runway right there. Looks like a big airplane so it won't be a threat coming to kill us. Zoom out a little bit more. All right, I think I see something maybe. Yep. So I could tell you that's uh, an enemy barracks. So we're going to put that right there, and we have an area track, which is fine, because he's not going to start moving, so we don't need a point track. And now all we have to do is fly to this up and down line, which is going to be our uh, bomb release point, and uh, drop a GBU on his head. You can also see this thick line right here. So what that represents is our bomb release queue. So basically that's going to start dropping down. This is our, our airplane where we're at. So once we start falling, we're going to hold our bomb release button and we're just going to hold it in. That queue is going to go like this and right when it hits our plane, our flight path indicator will flash and that means the bomb came off the rail. And then I'm going to turn the laser on and then that GBU with its laser seeker is just going to follow it down right into that building. So we're about 20 seconds out. I'm flip off the autopilot. Just get us a little bit better aligned here. There's the shoot cue holding the bomb release button. Pickle, laser on. I know my laser's on because of that flashing L on the HUD. Now I have to make sure that I keep him on screen, but also if I pass him up, my laser's facing um, the roof line that's going to reflect the laser back toward us. And so what we don't, we, we basically what we don't want to do right now is we don't want to pass up the target and put the laser on the other side because the bomb might lose uh, track of it. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle here a little bit so the bomb can maintain its lock. And we hit it. Let's see if it's on fire. It is. And we'll just wait to see if that explodes. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to basically fly back the way we came. And we can see our contrail comes from yonder. So we'll just turn back. Easier way to do this, though, is why not just fly back to the next waypoint, which is 21, and altitude hold, and steering select. And so now what we're going to do is just kind of fly back out a little bit and then turn back around and find the next target. Let's see if we could see that building right there. It doesn't say it was destroyed, 
but sometimes with ground units they burn for a while and then explode. Could have also dropped two bombs on them to just get a more assured kill, uh, but we'll just kind of see what goes on. So I think that there's another enemy command structure here somewhere. So what we can do um, as we come back in is we'll start searching for that. So we're just kind of flying out to buy ourselves some search time, get away from any enemies, make sure that no AA is chasing us, take a look at our RWR, make sure no bad guys are locking us up, look at um, our situational awareness, make sure there's not an enemy fighter close to us, there's that bomber. You can see the enemies are, or our friendlies are starting to see it, so maybe they'll engage that. And that's it. <clears throat> and so that's how we've created a mission for ourselves, um, flown up, engaged an enemy, dropped a bomb, etc., etc. And that's really the name of the game on the server, and just practicing it and doing it and getting a little bit better each time. And um, before you know it, you kind of master the systems of your plane, and you're able to uh, just be effective. Uh, uh, and it's very rewarding once you get to this point where you just kind of know what to do. Um, so that's, I think, all I'm going to cover uh, for this update stream. This was a lot of talking, and my new checklist spends a lot of time with us just trying to get up into the air. Um, but hopefully you find this a bit interesting, and uh, hope to see you join the server. So again, it's Operation Candyland. It's Operation Candyland on um, DCS Open Beta. And so uh, hopefully you'll come check it out, come play with us. We have a Discord too. Everybody just kind of hangs out and plays. Um, we're not too serious about, about our lives, so we just have a good time. Uh, and hope to see you there and hope this was interesting. Anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. Take care.